God is good. Hallelujah. Don't we just love him? Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us in our life today. Lord, thank you for sending your, your comforter, the Holy Spirit, Lord, to come in and help us through these hard times when we have the devil kind of rears ugly head in our life. Help us to put him back down in his place in Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. Lord, thank you for this wonderful pastors, Nancy and Ken. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for them. We just ask that you bless them, anoint them. Thank you, Fill Lord. them with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and give Pastor the word to say that appears each heart right in the way that it needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, open your Bibles this morning to Isaiah chapter 43. We're going to uh, continue in the topic of faith this morning. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith in God can move a mighty mountain. And faith worketh. Faith can take, uh, the faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mighty mountain. Doesn't take a lot of faith. People misunderstand faith. They think it takes a lot of faith to get something done. No, it just takes using the little bit of faith you do have. Hallelujah. Well, I only got so much gasoline. Well, use what you got. Just a little bit of gas can start a great big fire. And I'll tell you right now, just use your faith. Use your faith. God will move in our lives if we'll just use our faith. And one of the... Uh, put that faith thing up there, will you? That cross stick deal. There you go. Thank you. We're going to look at fear not just a little bit more in, in a reference to faith. The devil tries to steal your faith by moving you over into the area of fear. It's like Vicky was talking about this morning. Uh, oh, I've got, uh, it's cancer. Well, even if it was cancer, it's not bigger. How many people in this room has had cancer at some point in your life, but you sit here with us? Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, quite a few. Here you are. Cancer is not bigger than our God. Death is not bigger than our God. Nothing is bigger than our God. No matter what's going on or what has gone on, God is bigger. Hallelujah. We're going to look at, a little bit more at fear, but the devil wants us to look in, at, at our circumstances. And uh, how many times you... Have you got a shut-off notice on something? Or a repo notice? Or a whatever? And somehow God came through for you. Somehow you were out of a job and you didn't have money to do this or to do that. But somehow God made a way where there was no way in your life. And, and you know what? When we look back at those times, we need to remember that God is still... The same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it for you before, he'll do it for you again. He is uh, our heavenly father. And he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What a good God we serve. If you're in Isaiah chapter 43, then you're in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and if you're in verse 1, you're really in the spirit. <laughs> Isaiah 43 and verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. By thy name thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters... I will be with thee when thou and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire thou shalt not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon thee for I am the Holy One thy God the Holy One of Israel thy Savior 
I gave Egypt for thy ransom and Ethiopia and Sheba, Sheba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. I have loved thee, therefore I will give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north and give them up in the south and bring them back. Give up thy sons and daughters from afar and the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. This whole uh, uh, picture that God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah is telling us to, there's no need for fear. And, and you know why there's no need for fear? Because God is so mighty, he's the one that formed us. He says here, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. I created thee, I formed thee. God made you. He can fix it. We get these little piddly problems, like a button on your gown that some technician thinks is a cancer. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and the devil wants us to, to think there's something really wrong with us. And then other times we have things that are really wrong with us, and God can turn those, little, those things that are wrong with us around you. And how many times? Like the time that Vicki really did have a brain tumor, and God really did dissolve it. Same thing with Rich's brother, uh, uh, Roger, had that tumor behind his ear in right on the inside there of, uh, was it his ear or brain right on the inside yeah and and we called and prayed for him over the phone and that just dis disappeared just disappeared how long, why well because uh, he created thee and he formed thee so is anything too difficult for him to, oh just a, just a little something anything we deal with is little for God. He spoke the heavens and the, and the earth and the sun and the moon and stars into being. Hallelujah. He can take care of these little piddly things that we worry about. And, and don't get, so, uh, you know, so I've talked to a lot of people and they say, well, I just don't want to bother God with all these little things. Oh, please. Give me a large break. How many of you are fathers in this room? How many of you are mothers in this room? If your child needed a little something done and they come to you and it was a little something, would you do it? If you could? Amen? You bet. Sometimes, we have, we, sometimes our job is to teach them how to do it. But something that's bigger than us, hallelujah, God's going to take care of it for us. He said for us to trust him. He said, fear not. He said, I've formed you. He said, fear not. I created you. He said, then he says, I've redeemed you. Yeah. We fell into sin, didn't we? Adam fell into sin, ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Ate of the forbidden fruit. How many of us has ever eaten of the forbidden fruit? forbidden fruit <laughs> too many times haven't we we've eaten of the forbidden fruit but god said but i've redeemed you well i created you and i formed you and then you messed up and you sinned and he said and then i redeemed you what does redeem mean it means to purchase back that which had been stolen away we got stolen away by the devil we got stolen away by sin. We ate the forbidden fruit. We, we come under the lordship of another master, Satan, by yielding to his serpent's hiss in the garden and eating of the fruit that was forbidden for us. And the Lord says, I'm going to redeem you. And he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to die on a rugged cross and uh, pay the ransom due for our sin and because of that, we're forgiven and we're set free. And because of that, 
we don't even have to be afraid of dying. We can just go ahead and die one of these days when it's our time to die. And we can just say, Woo! Glory to God. I've been waiting a long time for this. I'm going to get to see my Jesus. Hallelujah. One of these days, we're going to shed this old body and we're going to go be in His presence. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. But he paid the ransom due. So we look at all the things we don't have to be afraid of. We have to be worried or afraid about anything, not even death. Because Jesus already got, he's already paved our way straight to heaven. Glory be to God. Amen? Hallelujah. And then he says, and then he says, um, I have called thee by thy name. Linda, God knows your name. Michael Dale, God knows your name. Now, I don't mean he knows your name. I mean he knows your name. That's a personal thing. See, it's a personal thing. And he's not, God is not like me. Daniel, Andrew, Ellie, Scrapper, Buffy, you know, I get, you know, I, 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 I'm, Daniel, I, I, I'd call, call, De, I'm trying to talk to Andrew, but, I'm, but I started out with Dan, Dan do, Dan Drew, <laughs> Dan Drew, and, and, and then, and then Andrew will go. Yeah, Mom. You know, he just gets right back at me because I don't know. But you know God knows your name, and he's never confused once. This is a very personal thing that God knows your name. Do you realize how many people are on planet Earth? I don't know how many billions on planet Earth right now. How many billion? Six billion? It's, it keeps going up, doesn't it? It was 4.5 when I was in school. I don't know how many. It's over six now. And you know what? God knows your name. But those of us that are born again, he knows our name in a real intimate way because we're adopted. The Bible says in Galatians 4, 6, and 7, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but you're a son, crying, Abba, Father. Which means there's an intimacy there that God is intimate with you. And he calls your name. And when he calls your name, he's calling you to that fellowship. I just love the fellowship of, and I, I know Sunday morning's a busy time for me, but little Eliana or little, uh, little Harmony, I was holding little Harmony during praise and worship. And I used to hold little Ellie and still do sometimes during worship. And you know what? I'm not too busy, even though I'm a pastor and I've got 19 things to do on Sunday morning, but I'm not too busy to hold those babies. And God is God of the universe, and he's not too busy. He's not too busy to be concerned about the things that you're concerned about. In fact, he, he says, I will perfect and I'll work on those things that concern you. The Bible says, casting all of our care on him, for he cares for us. Now, why would it say that? If God didn't care. It says, casting all your care, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. The things we're worried about, if we just give them to him, we wouldn't have to worry about them no more. It's like Vicky said, well, I ain't worried about it. I'm not worried about it if it's a, if it's a, if it's a nodule, a cancer, or if it's a clip on my blouse or whatever. I ain't worried. Because God has got it all under control. And he has ransomed me. And he knows my name. And then, how personal is this? Thou art mine. Thou art mine. See, another reason. We, you don't have any reason to be afraid of what's going on in your life. Yeah, but you don't know how bad it is. Well, I don't need to know how bad it is. 
I know how good he is. No matter how bad it is, God's got a plan. God's got a plan. When you fall off the bandwagon, God has a plan. When you mess up, God's got a plan. When you do it your own way, and you uh, mess everything up, guess what? God, God didn't fall off the throne. God is still on the throne, and he's still got a plan for you. And so, let him have charge of your life. Let him have, we used to sing a song, pick up the broken pieces and give them to the Lord. You take those broken pieces and give them to Jesus, and he can put them back together. There, see, there's a divine puzzle that you know not of. You know, we don't know the whole picture of God's puzzle, but he, know, he does. And he's, guess what? Whatever's going on right now, he's got a place for that in the puzzle of your life. Let him put it in there, and then just ask him for the next piece. And seek him and yield him. But because of these things, he says, when you pass through the water, I'm going to be with you. Well, that tells me that sometime might, we might have a flood in our life. Then he says, um, but they're not going to overflow you. I'm not going to let you drown. Just like Peter, I'm going to reach down. And, and Jesus reached down to the water and he lifted him up. Uh, they shall not overflow. When you walk through the fire, you're not going to be scorched or burned. That tells me we're going to go through some fire, doesn't it? You're going to go. And the, and the apostles told us, Apostle Paul told us, now don't be, a, don't be amazed at the fiery trial that's among you. He's, you're going to get through this trial. How are we going to get through it? We're not going to be afraid. Now, you know, you can be afraid of whatever's going on in your life. And it can hurt you as bad as if it was real. Vicki could have gave in to that fear. And she could have been as sick at her stomach as if they had told her you for sure have cancer. We biopsied it. It's, uh, it's ter your terminal. She could have been as afraid as if it had. And we, how, many, how many of us have been as sick about uh, something that we're afraid of? And it wasn't even real. It was fa fear, false evidence appearing real. Hallelujah. <laughs> but our God is bigger than our fears. Glory be to God. And, he, and, and then he just goes on to say, you're precious to me. You're precious in my sight, verse 4. He says, I am with thee. Look at all the intimacy. Because we know how much God loves us, we, we, can get, we can turn loose of the fear that's in our lives. Turn loose of it. Give it to God. You've got to believe that God is bigger than your stuff. Is he or isn't he? Then you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. Bless the mighty name of Jesus. I really want to read 1 Peter 5, 7 in the Amplified. Have you got the, the Amplified over there? Maybe this is one here. 1 Peter 5, 7. I love this verse. I just gave you about four or five reasons not to be afraid. Does anybody remember any of them? Hallelujah. Is it 5, 7? Casting all your... Is that the right one? Here we go. Here we go. Let's see if this is the Amplified. Well, it is. Okay. Casting the whole... Oh, there it is. Ha casting the whole of your care. Part of it? But now listen, I want to hold on to this little part of my fear and worry and care and anxiety. Could I just keep this little part for myself here? I can handle this. I can handle this little part here. Huh-uh. Because when we do that, we're trying to be self-sufficient. God doesn't want you to be self-sufficient. He wants you to be sufficient in Him. People accuse us Christians, well, you Christians just use God as a crutch. You know what? I use God as a stretcher. Crutch ain't enough for me. I need Him to carry me through this mess. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anybody else? And, uh, and he's good carrying me through it. He's got me through it. What, and you know what I want to say to them? Well, that, that's all well and good. Tell me what your crutch is. Is it your drugs? 
Is it your alcohol? Is, your, is it your four or five affairs? What is your crutch that you've got going? What is your, everybody's got a crutch. Let's just let Jesus be our stretcher. Amen. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. And see, this is what we, he told us in Isaiah. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? That, that just almost makes you want to look back at uh, Psalms 55, 22 for just a second. Uh, Psalms 55, 22. And just look at that for one second. 55, 22 of Psalms. And it says, Cast thy burden on the Lord. Pastor, I got such a burden. I got such a burden. I know. Been there, done that. I know all about it. I whined around too. I got such a burden. All right, let me talk straight to you. Do you want do you want me to feel sorry for you? Or do you want me to help you? Carol wants me to do both, and that's what I want, too. That's what I want most of the time, is I want, I want you to feel a little bit sorry for me, and, but, I want, but then I want you to tell me the truth. And here's the truth. Here's the truth. If you're carrying it, he ain't. Give it to him, and you're stinking carrying it yourself. Hello? Let go of it. Do that again, Michael. That was good. See that, Michael? Like that. There you go. Hallelujah. Let go of it. What verse was we in? 55 something. 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. He's going to hold you steady. Cast your burden. Cast your burden on the Lord. Cast your burden on the Lord. Some of you have got some big burdens in here today. And you need to listen to what I'm telling you right now. This is a word from the Holy Ghost to you today. It's a word from the Holy Ghost. Cast your burden. You know what this, I'm going to tell you what this means in, in the southeast Missouri colloquial. This means give it to God. And he'll take care of it. He'll take care of the rest. He'll take care of the rest. Man maketh his plans, but the Lord directeth his steps. Some of you have made some plans. Your plans, I'm talking by the Holy Ghost right now. I'm not just talking to you. I'm not just talking right now. This is the Holy Ghost. Some of you have made plans in your life. And you've made recent plans. And some of your plans were taking you a certain direction. I'm going to tell you right now that God has got other directions for you to go. You've made your plans, but now the Lord is going to direct your path. The Lord is going to direct your path. You stay tied in with Him. Don't go by the natural man. Brother Ron taught on this last Sunday night about being led by the Holy Ghost. Don't be led by your circumstances. Don't be led by other people's opinions. Don't be led by prophetic utterances and words. Be led by the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Be led by that inner witness of the Spirit of the living God because He's with you, that still small voice He's speaking to you in. Let that still small voice of the Holy Spirit guide you and you'll stay out of trouble. You'll stay out of trouble. Don't go with the flashy and the dramatic and the exciting. All that glitters is not gold, people. Are you listening to me? Some things, sim sometimes simple is just better. Simple is just better. Let God have control of your life. 
You know, that I, it, I just want to go, just want to, uh, to Proverbs. Not in my notes, but Proverbs chapter 3 for a second. I just feel like I'm talking in the Spirit for you. Just a minute. In the name of Jesus, just listen to what God might be saying to you. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Too many times we try to figure out in our understanding how we're going to make these things happen in our life. How am I going to make this job thing happen? How am I going to make this housing thing happen? How am I going to make this, how am I going to do all these different things that I'm worrying and fretting about? If we spent the time worrying about trusting the Lord, then we do figuring out how to do it in our own strength. Take the time that you spend worrying about something and just worship the Lord and listen to Him and seek Him. And, and you, look what He says. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, you acknowledge Him in how many of your ways? All thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. All thy ways. All thy ways. All thy ways. When we do that, then these things fall into place. And He will make, bring that direction to us that we need. He'll bring the, th the thing in, around in our life that we need. Hallelujah. When we seek Him. When we don't try to figure it out. But we give it to Him and just let Him lead us. And let Him guide us. He, oh, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, listen to the Holy Ghost. He's the best friend you could ever have. He's the best friend, the Spirit of God that's on the inside. And we sang the song, send it on down, let the power fall on down. You know, the power's already here. Now, I like the, I like the special anointings, and I like those old Pentecostal songs. And I like it when the Holy Ghost does come on us and we feel excited. But in reality, uh, part of that song is not even biblical. Part of it is, and part of it isn't. I want the anointing to come on down, or a fresh anointing, or a fresh fire. Yeah, we want that. But if you think about it, the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you. He's on the inside of you right now. Hallelujah. And He's trying to lead you and guide you and direct you. And as you trust the Lord with all of your heart, these other things are going to come into place. That reminds me of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, which says, Seek ye first. We ought to just look at that in the Amplified. Matthew uh, 6, Matthew 6, 33. This is for somebody. For somebody. You know, I was, I put this up on Facebook, but this morning I put a picture of a family going to church. And everybody was going to church. And, and I just said, you know, there's something about going to church as a family, taking your children to church. And it's something about putting that first. There's something powerful about that. And then I said, it, it amazes me how today how people will make sure that their kids go to school. You make sure your kids go to school every day. You know, right? You, yeah, you might give them a cheat day a couple times a year or three or whatever. But overall, you make sure your kids are at school all the time. How many of you do that? And, of course, the ones that aren't here are the ones that aren't doing it. But, but you know what I'm saying? Make sure your kids are in church. And, and then it amazes me that people think that church is not important, and, but they go to work every day. Now, why is it that they go to work? I'd like somebody to give me an explanation of why it is that you go to work. Why do you go to work? Money. Because of a reward, right? That you go to work because of a reward. You're feeling good about yourself. And you're accomplishing something. Amen. You go to work. Well, you know, but basically money. <laughs> we want a reward. Let me tell you a little secret. The Bible says that God is a 
rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So the ones that are not even here today, listen to me on Facebook and on YouTube that I'm getting, you're going to listen to me later. Amen. Do you believe that God will reward you for being in church? Yes. Well, I do. Because he said that when we we're assembled together, we would receive a blessing. That it, two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of you. Amen. And how many of you believe, you know, people are, are not, you know what they're teaching their kids? Well, you need to go to school. School is important, but now if you miss church, it's no big deal. Which tells your kids, money is important, but if you go to heaven or hell, it's not important. And if you live right, it's not important. And if you learn about the things of God, it's not as important as long as you make the almighty dollar. Hello? Hello? What am, I'm, I'm preaching to you, ain't I? Put God first. I never did get to my verse, did I? There it is, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's the King James Version. That's the one I got memorized. The Amplified says the same thing, but a little deeper. It says, but seek, aim at, and strive after first of all his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, and then all these things taken together will be given to you besides. What other things he's talking about? Jesus just got through talking to him about, uh, about what they eat, about what they wear, and where they live. Their clothing, their houses, and their food. Isn't that pretty much what we worry about more than anything? Our clothing and our houses and our food. And, uh, and, and, and Jesus said, you want that taken care of? Seek me first. I'll take care of all that. Put God in his proper place. Which, let's see, one, two, three. Where should God be on that? One. First. First. Let's put him, let's, if he's not first, let's put him first today. If you do, then you don't have any need for fear, do you? Because all your needs are going to be supplied. All your problems are going to, are they just going to be, you're just never going to have a problem? No. He said, I'll be with you in trouble. I'll be with you in trouble. And I'll deliver you. I'll be with you in trouble. That reminds me of Psalms 91. Psalm 91. Just look at that for a second. I like Psalm 91. Hallelujah. Listen, verse 15 says, Psalm 91, 15, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. It doesn't say we wasn't going to get in trouble, did it? It says God's going to be with us in trouble. How many has had trouble? God said, I'll be with you in trouble. And he says, and I will deliver him. What's that mean? I'm going to be with you in that trouble, and I'm going to get you out of it. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were in that fiery furnace, glory be to God. It says there was a fourth man in there with them. Looked like the Son of God. And what happened? He was with them in the fire, and they came out. And they came out of the fire. He delivered them. God's going to deliver you out of your fire. Hallelujah. You don't have to be afraid of the fire. Some of you are so afraid of the fire. You're so afraid of all these things. God is bigger than all those things. God is bigger than your giant. Hallelujah. I mean, take your giant on, meet him straight on in the... In the right in the in the valley, and just say your heads are coming off, dude. Your heads are coming off in Jesus' name. And throw the stone at him. And what's the stone? The glory be to God. It's the word of God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is our rock. And we're going to take that name and we're going to defeat our giants. And I, the giant of fear is a terrible giant. Do you realize in this story of David and Goliath, now, I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but just run it all through your mind real quick. You got the whole story in there now? Play it in your mind. Whew. All of, God, of Israel was terrified of Goliath. 
Saul was afraid of Goliath. His brothers were afraid of Goliath. David's brothers were afraid of Goliath. All of the mighty men of Israel were afraid of Goliath. Yeah, they were, they were a scared of him. They was a scared of him. Mm -hmm, that's what my grandma said, a scared. Not scared, but a scared. A scared of him. They was. They were afraid of Goliath. Why? Well, he was bigger, looked stronger, better trained, had some really good armor on, and had a really big sword. And probably, well, he had never been defeated before, so why would they think they could defeat him? But little bitty old David. You can be little bitty, but let me tell you something today, people. If you've got a big faith, you can defeat any Goliath. If you've got a big faith, you can defeat any fear. If you've got a big faith, you can defeat anything that the enemy sets against you. Hallelujah. And David went out there. I mean, all of Israel, even the king Saul, was terrified of Goliath. But David was not afraid. Because you know why he wasn't afraid? Because David remembered. He said, now, he got out there and he said, well, the Lord was with me when he was tending the sheep and, and I killed the bear. The bear tried to get my sheep and I killed the bear. It says with his bare hand. And it says, and then the Lord was with me. There was a lion tried to come and get my sheep and I killed him. How did he do that? The anointing of the Holy Ghost. He was anointed of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. He took on the bear. He took on the lion. And when it came to Goliath, who was two, probably twice as tall as him, maybe three times, I don't know how tall he was. They say he was nine feet tall, but who knows how tall he was, 11, 9, 11, whatever. Glory be to God. He come to him, he said, now, he said, uh, you know, uh, the Goliath said, uh, he said, who are you? You know? Little ant, a little worm. Now he he started mocking him. Started mocking, and the devil mocks you too, telling you who are you, who are you to stand against me? I've been here a long time. And David said, "I do not come to you with natural things. I do not come to you with a sword or a shield." He said, "But I come into you and." The name of the Lord of hosts, the, of the armies of Israel, and in his name I will kill you today, cut off your head, and feed you to the fowls of the air. Now that's something for a little boy to say. That's something for a young teenager to say against an 11 foot giant. But what was he doing? He saw his God bigger than that Goliath. And until you see your God bigger than your sickness, bigger than your financial need, bigger than your mental need, bigger than your addiction, bigger than whatever's going on in your life, until you see it bigger, then Goliath will still keep mocking you. He'll keep mocking you. But the day that you get the revelation of David, and who, and who wrote the 23rd Psalm? Yeah, D David. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want to make me to lie down in green pastures, leading me to the side of the still. He restoreth my soul. He said, and on down the way, he said, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid. And the, of the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. How did he know? I'll tell you how he knew. Because God gave him the strength to defeat Goliath. He knew there was no reason to be afraid. For thou art with me. Hallelujah. And, and what happened? Goliath was come. Goliath was mocking him. 
He was making fun. You ever, anybody ever had somebody make fun of you? The devil makes fun of us all the time. And David just... Pow! Right in the head. Just like Looney Tunes said, pow! Right in the kisser. Knocked him out. He went over and took Goliath's own swords. He didn't even have a sword. Just take the enemy's sword away from him and cut his head off with him. See, don't just knock the devil down. Just go ahead and do him in. Just cut him all the way down. Cut the head of that fear off in the name of Jesus. You're not going to defeat me because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We don't have any business yielding to the fear of the enemy. Let's stand. Listen to me, people. Everybody standing up here, listen to me right now. I want you to say it like you're mad because you should be. Say, in the name of Jesus. You fear. Go from me. In Jesus' name. I am not afraid. For God is with me. He's with me in trouble. And he will deliver me. He knows my name. He has redeemed me. By his own blood. He created me. He formed me. And he's bigger. Than all of my situations. I am not afraid. In Jesus name. Now just be. Now I want you to just lift. Just do what Michael did. Just do this right. Lift your hand up. And just let go of it.